You ain't never seen a man turn leg go with his hands. You ain't never seen a man get a queen wet with a glance. What a turn, why whole wide world, mind in my mind. In and out of time, my light shine bright for the blind. Some by the way I do it. 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 Said I'm gonna be a millionaire soon, but I already knew it. I'ma die the bullets fluid. All this winning therapeutic. Some by the way I do it. Some by the way I do it. They be trying to drain my energy up with the battery, is not included. Women trying to be recruited. Let them do the then I bought it. What is cute that she falling? Some by the way I do it. I remember playing ring around the rosy now. I got a pocket full of OZs, water dollars, wallet full of old cheese. Got a Glock, a cock and pop a police. Block a block a block a boom, shock a lock a bottle, shot him while he rock a rosary. Got your mama watching out the nose, please. Sloppy toppy while I'm trying to go sleep. Some but the way I do it, I ball out like a nude is hooping. Or a who's your student, got the problem, I'm a room is cubic. I'm a superhuman, you a decorated unit fusion. Got the music booming, marijuana got me too much losing. I'm in my room secluded. Peace, family. Welcome to another episode of Underground Railroad Productions, man. In the building with Blue Pill. Peace, love, and light. Welcome back, my good brother. Listen, it's man, there's, there's, there's a lot going on in the news. Uh, one, oh, before I get started, I just want to tell the people once again, make sure you get your tickets to the most anticipated lecture yes. in the last decade. We got Brother Panic, Dr. Phil Valentine. The brother I see at the Duke of Tears, all in the building on the same day, a metaphysical conference. June 3rd. June 3rd in Brooklyn, New York City. In the description bar, there will be information if you want to buy physical tickets or if you want to get the live stream, there'll be information as well. And if you uh, need info, contact 646-472-4219. They pulling up. You know what I'm saying? They pulling up in these streets. They asking me like, yo. Son, that's crit. That's actually. I'm like, yo, yeah, yo this, a lady called me and, and said, I "Is that fake?" I see. And she was like, "Is that is that really happening?" I was like, "Nah, I got I got to step up my promotion because yeah, yeah, people yeah, think it's there, fake at this point." There's such a activity to have to have a jolt like that <laughs> and wake people out of their sleep. Remember, they still coming out of the whole hibernation aspect. Nothing really happened the whole in, the, in the whole winter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying on the lecture circuit. So. To see this, you know what I'm saying, it's, 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 it's a heavyweight situation. It definitely feels like a throwback to the days of LIU when people were actually teaching. So this is a, this is a welcomed event that has a lot of people anticipating, as Panic said, getting their butts in the seats. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Indeed, man. Indeed. If, and for three individuals to be, you know, you know these, these are high-quality individuals, man. Just make sure y'all get them tickets. But I want to get into the show right now. There's so much going on in the news. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Twin album. Yes, yes. Dot com. All right. We got the merch. Everything is getting ready. You know what I'm saying? That double disc. Yeah. The second disc should have dropped by the time that you've seen this. We will be inboxing people who purchased the album. Links to the second disc and then everybody else. You can go and get the twin thrillers okay because it's you know how michael jackson had the thriller and that was a classic but you got two cds this classic you get the twin pillars twin thrillers twin the album dot com yeah i like that outfit my brother indeed this is the performance outfit april 22nd we have a lecture in atlanta georgia uh, with professor grip fear of a black planet too and we're also going to be hitting the stage and performing from cuts from our album for the very first time they got a concert in that same area um you know uh hopefully i'll post the information on my instagram blue pillar 44 uh concert in the park i think it's called something like that god damn it if you're in the building you'll find out if you come to the venue i think when we take the break we're gonna go and hit the stage and tear the shit down do some performances and then we'll be back so this is gonna be you know i'm i'm, I'm in performance mode you, you feel me so indeed yes, indeed well you know uh when people think about you they think about consciousness but uh black empowerment but there's somebody man who stole the show the other day at coachella performance right with, with a it's with a conscious performance with a like, conscious performance i ain't even get yo, yo blue mind. man i watched i was i was practicing on the piano and my, and my, and my, my queen was watching it and I had to keep, keep, I kept running to the computer because every time she did a new song, it was like, 
one of the most amazing performances Theatrical. I've ever seen in my entire life. That's a lot. And yeah, man, you it grew up through the Michael Jackson era. Yes, yes. We're when, talk when, about when, that. When he moved just an inch and people passed out. We're gonna talk about that. They just, yeah. they they fell out. They fell out. He moved his finger. He moved his arm. They fell out. Boom! Ambulance came. <laughs> but you know, I'm not getting into the comparison game. Uh, Mike is Mike, and you know, there's there's none other. But and Beyonce's Beyonce. But man, that's a that's a wow. That's a that's a powerful sister there, man. I mean, to perform that many, I think she was up there for like two and a half hours, bro. And 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 how she represented for the HBCUs, the the coat of arms she was wearing. Um, you know, the music she chose, some of the music she, she chose. I mean, yo, bro, man, it was that was a hell of a performance, bro. What you think about Beyonce out of all people? Some people say she's the she's unapologetically black at this point. And uh even her mother told her not to do that performance. So talk to me about uh the direction consciousness is going and how do you think Beyonce is carrying that torch as far as pop culture? Um, you know, we, we've had precursors to this conversation a few times on this particular network. We just we, talked about her father two weeks ago. We spoke about her father and we spoke about the stance that, um, he initially took due to his programming. What we didn't get to speak about is how that programming may have played on the life of his children. You know, the fact that in the beginning when he met Miss Tina, and he thought that she was a European. What he didn't know is that he bumped into somebody who herself was unapologetically black. Now, I know that that might be hard for some people in the listening audience to um, accept and believe because they might look at her continents. They might look at her outer appearance and her hair and the skin tone and what have you. And maybe things that she said in the past or decisions that she's made. And they might get into their bag of judgment. And I will warn you against that because we don't know their entire true life story. You know, from what the mother says, she exposed her children to a level of um, black militants, if you will, early in their career or early in their life by bringing them to the shrine of the black Madonna in Houston. You know what I'm saying? And the shrine of, of the black Madonna, if anybody knows you know, this is not a regular Christian denomination. You know what I'm saying? They get into uh, certain aspects of African spirituality as it applies to Christianity or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But nonetheless, these children were exposed to their history or uh, aspect of their history. And we have seen Jay-Z and Beyonce progressively lean towards... Uh, what has been now termed, you know, uh, stay woke consciousness. Some people call Hollywood consciousness. You know, they have done things that the observer, one that is not steeped in judgment, you know, one that is not um, arrested by wanting to always, you know, uh, uh, I feel like this person is this or I think this and then they want to or they want the world to wear that or that person to wear that because you feel this particular way about a person or you don't like the direction that they've taken in their career or there's just some hang up that you have about them. So you, you you're just judging. You're always steeped in judgment. And I think that when it comes to Beyonce, uh, no, you know, a lot of people are not willing to allow her to grow. You know what I'm saying? They want to speak about the Baphomet. They want to speak about this. They want to speak about her scantily clad outfits. Even though this is a woman in the industry that doesn't have a hit list. This is one of the cleanest women on record in regards to her sexual history that we know of. It's facts. You understand? This is a, a devoted wife. She does, she's not been in the news with headlines for cheating on her husband. Her husband cheated on her. No, uh, ironically enough with a Becky so her husband was a victim of the same mentality right that her father was talking about because her husband in plenty of songs has spoke about his need and want in his younger years for a red bone 
with the baby hair, you know what I'm saying, with the curly baby hair, what have you. And we know where those conversations come from. It comes out of the same conversations that pretty much arrest the development mentally of her father. So her mother and those roots have kicked in to this 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 performance career where she is seemingly post, you know, trying to find herself and discover herself and, you know, uh, embodying and embracing European standards of beauty. She's grown into a, a beautiful mother, you know what I'm saying? And uh, an entertainer, you know what I'm saying, that probably is the uh, the best of her time. You dig what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I think you want to ask a question? Well, in terms of, you know, she's uh, she represents woman empowerment. Um, she represents black feminism. Yes. Do you do you think? I mean, do you have a problem? Well, not do you have a problem with that? Do you think some people think what she represents might be dangerous because of Absolutely. the the word feminist and uh, you know uh, Ma, uh, who's the the um the founder? What's her name? Singer. Wait, which Mar is that Margaret Singer? Is that Margaret Singer? Or is, that, is that Planned Parenthood? Or, no, that's Planned Parenthood, yeah. right? But you the the, the uh, yeah. I understand what you, uh, I understand uh, the uh, question. Uh, like, is it something is, you think... Is, is the title threatening yes. based on the politics attached to it? Attached you to know it, what I'm yes. Saying? And the aspect of it being inclusive of a, it's a backdoor to a lot of other things that we might not be cool with, quote-unquote, in the conscious community because Beyonce comes with the whole bag. The dancers is coming with her. Right. Her makeup stylist and all of them. Who's part of that stay woke situation? Uh, Black Lives Matter. Yeah, they all kicking in the door, and they all want to be part of that party. So once you allow entry in on one aspect to say, "Oh well, you know she's in her woke bag and she's quote unquote conscious," you don't understand that consciousness has been flipped on its head over here. You know what I'm saying? Where that shit represents something totally different, and it looks like something totally different that you're not familiar with. It's packaged totally different. You know what I'm saying? And that's what, that's, you know what I mean? She's riding in on that bus. I, I really don't think that, you know, her shtick is about um, that little area that we be in on 125th. Like, <laughs> that ain't what they about. You know what I'm saying? This is a, you know, this is the, um, this is consciousness with a twist. You dig what I'm saying? And, I, I always knew this. It was gonna come to this place. I was again fear of a black planet one, 2010. I've been speaking about this for eight or nine goddamn years. You know what I'm saying? So we been knew that they was coming. You know what I mean? But now that they're here to see it, um, the trade off is still is is somewhat balanced because at the end of the day, she is a performer. She's responsible for memorable moments, right? archivable memorable moments she's breaking records she's um advancing a, a level of imagery into the world that still shows us in a regal manner what is the counterbalance outside of beyonce with a repetition of performances let's not act like this is just number one this is this is a long this comes you know with a long string of performances where she has repped and gone into her esoteric cultural bag consistently, right? Just through imagery to show people, look, this is what we on now. On to the next one. We on something new. And then that's for the adherent or the fan to go out and find out. But well, what is this about? It, does this go deeper? Can we dig deeper? You know what I'm saying? Well, what are these symbols? And why this? And why that? You know, it's a conversation piece. And it's better than the conversation that was being had prior about, damn, why she always got her ass out? Why she always this? Why she always that? You know, like, you got to take the bitter with the sweet. She had her ass out, but it was underneath a regal robe. You know what I'm saying? Balmain at that. So, you know, like, are there any pleasing the people? Right. You know what I mean? Right. You know, Cardi B was up there popping it with a baby in her stomach. You dig what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I you know, I don't know what the people want. You know what I'm saying? But can she you? Was, she was channeling her inner Nina Simone. 
I know that that might be sacrilegious to some people. And shout out to Nina Simone. She was posthumously inducted into the Hall of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame the same night that Beyonce was doing her thing. Once again, you know, breaking records. You know, records are still to be broken. There's still records out there to be broken. So she was the first melanated woman to headline Coachella, which is, you know what I'm saying, normally recognized as a, a pretty um, majority a Caucasian event, you know, in the deserts of California, where, you know what I'm saying, like, those millennials don't necessarily show up for that, you know what I mean? They showing up for what they showing up for, you know what I mean? That they used to what they used to. She changed that, you know what I mean? She did, They had to cater to her. She didn't cater to that audience. So some websites, you know, I'm just looking through reading different articles. One website in particular, I forget the name, was talking about how she's pro Beyonce is pro black, but she is also pro capitalist. So we should beware. Uh, do you think that's dangerous for a multimillionaire? Right. You know, niggas that just spend a billion dollars going to watch Black Panther. They need to cut it out. <laughs> like again, like blackness needs to make their fucking mind up at some particular point. Are you capitalist? To stop, niggas, stop running around talking about how much one point trillion dollars you pump into society as if that's a badge of honor. You're fucking consumers, all right? You're a tool of capitalism. You're the consumer aspect of it. She creates products and sells it to the world. Yeah, she's a fucking capitalist. What is she supposed to be? Huh? Like, what is she supposed to be? Now, she could be more philanthropical. Again, that's me putting my judgment on her because I don't know what she does. And I don't know to what extent she does it. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know what ideas she has about her responsibility to do things or what she's going to do or how I go about doing it. I have no idea. I know that, you know, from what I'm seeing, if she puts the majority of her time into motherhood and rehearsing to do those performances... Well, I see both of those areas of her life paying off very well. She's a goddamn entertainer. She gets paid to entertain. Is it, you know, um, a lot of headlines talked about how her, her show, her set, educated her white audience on black culture, whether it was, you know, the, the band and the HBCUs, whether it was uh, the black national anthem. Do you feel as though that's something important in this country to progress that white people get educated Absolutely. on black culture? Absolutely. And it has to take place at the hands of the people who they feel most comfortable with. Because, like I said, prior to her string of becoming, quote unquote, woke and making music to coincide with it and imploring imagery that promotes it. She was in, you know, what I'm saying she was in her freakum dress bag. She was in her sex in the city bag. She was in, you know, what I'm saying she was uh, teetering on the feminist side. You dig what I'm saying? But she didn't get into that place where she was like, I'm going to put this blackness in your face and you're going to have to, whether you're uncomfortable or not, you're going to have to deal with it and live with it. You know what I'm saying? And now they know what to expect from a Beyonce concert, from a Beyonce performance, as if they didn't already know. She's making it clear and she's not wavering on the stage that she's standing on. So... Again, she represents a illustrious line of entertainers who came into the knowledge of themselves and graduated at a midpoint or later point in their history or their career where they infuse politics or cultural identity into their entire character. And she has crossed that line, you know what I'm saying, where she can't necessarily jump back into her, you know, I'm going to, you know, just be in the weave bag and. You know what I mean? Look at her child. Look how the impact of what this child must have. Like that child, I don't know who that child is. I don't know where that child come from. That's a different type of child. That's a different type of entity. You know what I'm saying? That entity seems like it's very much like um, into whatever it's into. It, 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 it loves, you know, Blue Ivy appears to love uh, both of her parents or what have you. But it looks like Blue Ivy got a mind of her own. You yeah, feel me? Like yeah, she be yeah. doing her own Google searches. You know what I'm saying? And she she seems to be a very beautiful spirit. And I know that she's having a, an impactful effect on her parents because they're growing up. They're growing differently, you know, as they grow into their into their parentage. And why can't we just 
celebrate that why i mean you know what i'm saying like why can't we just enjoy that like everything has to be a conspiracy everything has to be grounds for argument we can't just sit back and say well goddamn they appear to be doing a very good job with this child you know what i'm saying let alone the fact that she had twins right after that you know she's mothering twins i don't know whether she's uh, nursing them breastfeeding them you know what i mean i haven't seen too many pictures of them you know but it's still a beautiful thing, man, that this woman do who embodies the, you know, like there's a king of the nigga kingdom. And there's a queen of whatever the counterbalance to that is. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get vulgar. I, you know, a brother called me the other day and his nine and, and six year old daughter, you know, was was greeting me on the phone. So I know that there's babies watching this. So I don't want to dig into my bag and, and start saying things or what have you but you know the way that she has come into her cultural expression again whether it's showpiece or not is still a beautiful thing because once again at the end of the day she is an entertainer she, she's expected to show us something you feel me would you rather not see that than what you always complaining about? Once again, Cardi B brought this trip pole to Coachella. Would you rather see Beyonce going back to that? You understand? Uh, so, all right. It was historic, man. She, she, she incorporated so many things that spoke to quote unquote blackness, right? Black Americanness or Black Americanism for that matter. You know what I'm saying? Southern Black Americanism for that matter. More so, the things that are integral to blacks in the South are the very things that she represents and puts into her music and now into the imagery of her performances. You dig what I'm saying? Now, it's going to be upon her husband to marry the northern Negro aesthetic to that. You know what I'm saying? And show, okay, well, this is how we're going to marry the two. And their relationship, based on that dynamic, once again, it can be a beautiful thing if you're not looking at it with judgment to look for the fucking horns in the, in, in the devil's tails, in the pitchfork. You, you cursed again, Blue. The, 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 the children are watching. You cursed again, my brother. I know, but I, I ain't say <laughs> the other stuff. That I, you know. Yo, you know what? You know, it's funny saying when you said the horns and all of that. A lot of Christians don't like Beyonce. I, 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 a, a lot I of Christians imagine. got a problem. <laughs> on got a problem with, with with Beyonce. Is it time for us what? as a community to grow up and not think about bafflement and and I and uh, the Illuminati and all that stuff? Is that kind of childish at this point? On you know, for a Christian to turn to that as a reason to not like this sister? Yeah. Or is it legitimate? Again, I, I don't know what their argument is because well, once she's, again, she's, she's in the devil worshiping, you know, all that ancient Egyptian stuff. And, you know, their religion is also based on um, redemption, having redemptive qualities. You know what I'm saying? We were speaking about the, the Stefan Clark situation the other night, and I forgot to, to fail that we were speaking about that incident around Easter when people were getting ready to celebrate the redemption. You know what I'm saying? So being a Christian, you have to embody an appreciation for the redemption quality in a person. You dig what I'm saying? Like, when that whole situation was going on, I had seen a video about Tyreek. He was saying some things, disparaging things about black women, but consciousness affords you the redemptive quality at all times. So somebody can always pull out their conscious community past and say, hey, look, I wasn't woke back then. I was asleep. You can't hold that against me. And a sinner can say the same thing. Or oh, I was sinning back then. I didn't know no better. You feel me? I guess Beyonce can say the same thing at some point to say, hey, it was my stylist's fault. Or oh, I probably had a spiritual advisor. They had me getting into this. Or the, you know, the industry had me in a particular way. But, you know, my, the strength of my relationship and my faith and whatever allowed me to break free. But, yeah, like you said, but the Christians are looking at the comedic imagery and saying that that's devil worship, too. So she'll never get a pass. You know what I mean? The Christians are never going to be happy because any uh, um, imploring of 
African iconography to them is devil worship, but not the Greek stuff. I wanted to do right, not the HBCU stuff, not the Greek pageantry stuff. That's not devil worshiping. Okay, <laughs> not the Greek stuff, <laughs> but the comedic stuff we can't do with that. How about that? So. I don't, you know, just like conscious people, I don't know if Christians will ever be happy with anything that anyone does. Well, I know you got to go blue, but as an artist, as a performer, as an artist, you got to, you got to, uh, you got a show coming up in Atlanta. Does Beyonce inspire you? And if so, how inspiring is she you to is she to you as a creative and as an artist, man? Watching this woman up there doing what she do. Like I said. If she was only responsible for two things in her life, right? Motherhood, okay? Because I'm sensitive. She has twins. She has twin babies. I know a type of job. And her daughter, and her daughter name is Blue. And she got a daughter named Blue. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? And um, and she wore a dress from Balmain. And Balmain is located at 44 Francois Place. That's oh, shit, a whole other story. Here we go. Here we go. Uh-oh. It's a whole other story. Here okay? <laughs> but, like I said, if she was only responsible for two things, which was being a good wife, you know what I'm saying, good mother, that, that whole parentage, family aspect, and then her, her career, the thing that pays her bills that she's responsible for is she's supposed to be a consummate entertainer, okay, at the top of her game because she embodies the name or the station of queen. This is the queen bee, all right? So this is the queen of whatever it is that she does. I don't, is that stuff considered R&B? Is it pop? And she's the queen of pop? And she's the queen of R&B? I don't know what that genre is. To me, it's good music, so... I just sit back and say, hey, you know what I mean? Because it works for the demographic. It works for the people that's intended to work for. It translates very well with them. And she performs the hell out of it. So even if I wasn't even into her music, because I don't listen to her music, but I could watch her performances, her performances is purely entertaining. And I think that's the mark of a true entertainer or a true performer. It's like, you don't even listen to my music. But you watch my performances. Yeah, that, that's how I felt. You know what I'm saying? Watching, I like, was damn. enraptured. I couldn't <laughs> not look. I could, you know, every time I did look away, I found myself looking back. Same way I had two computers open. I was super busy, but I kept, you know, I had like 19 tabs open, but I kept switching back. You know what I mean? To to see like she brought Destiny Child out. She, she brought Jay out with the, you know, with the blowout, and she was towering over her husband. He looked minuscule on that stage compared to her. You feel me? She really showed out, bro. Okay? So as a performer, I'm looking at perfection. I'm reminded when I was five, six, seven, eight, nine, looking at Michael Jackson. I'm reminded when I was looking at Prince, and I'm seeing the graduation of both of those artists. Shout out to Cambada. You know, we were on the live last night, and he was saying that Beyonce is the, the second coming you know, she's the best rendition of the, the artist that I just mentioned because she doesn't have to pretend to be a divine feminine. She naturally is. That's what they was going for, right? If we're talking about performance, the essence of performance within itself is a feminine aspect. You know what I'm saying? So nobody can technically perform better than a female. So you're looking at the best performer ever. Because she has all of the things to qualify for best performance. Her vocal range is out of this roof, right? Her, the physicality aspect, the way that she moves, all right? She was getting busy. She was dancing her ass off with them dancers. The choreography just looked beautiful. The aesthetics of it was so fulfilling, right? Yeah. yeah. Negative ions were being released by watching this thing. Because you're seeing all of these working parts. It's a beautiful thing. And when you talk about community, the community, the epitome of it is the need and necessity for working parts and the beauty of them. I'm seeing this in this show. Like, yo, this is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? This is a music all unto itself. And then she has the aesthetics of beauty, her being a Virgo. Remember, I told you they are the twin pillars, okay? Jaquin and Boaz, strength and beauty. 
She's the Virgo. She's beauty. Her aesthetic, she's pleasing to look at. Can't get enough. I be like, well, goddamn. I thought she went on a vegan diet. What the hell was they pumping up now? Yeah, shout out all the Virgos, by the way. Yeah, shout, shout out, out to the Virgos. September, September 17th in the house. Shout out to the Virgos. <laughs> it's very special people. You know what I'm saying? Everybody should have a Virgo in their life. M man. MJ they, they, was a Virgo too. Wow. Michael Jackson. April 20? I mean, August 29th. Yeah, yeah. My, Michael was a Virgo too. What, what sign was Prince? Do you know? Prince was a, Gem a Gemini. Gemini? Okay. Yeah, Prince okay. was a Gemini. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, that was just like you're, you're looking at somebody who's at the top of their craft work. And all of us, our work should look like how her stage work look like. In whatever field that you're doing, your work should look like that. Or you should be working towards looking as a businessman. I want my work to look like that on stage. I got work to do. But I want my work to look like that as a performer. You know what I'm saying? Artist as a designer. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just artistry. It's the, it's, it's the epitome of artistry. And there's going to be mad people that got negative things to say about her and her husband and her career and her. All of the conspiracy theorists are going to come out and throw darts. But at the end of the day, all right, remove yourself from judgment and just say, look, as an observer, right, of someone who. Is is just a connoisseur of fine art, you know what I'm saying? However, you find yourself being a curator or uh, 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 somebody who looks at fine art and can appreciate it, what you saw on that stage, that was fine art. You know what I'm saying? Donald Trump can't even hate. How about that? You could find it in your heart, but Donald Trump would have to get on Twitter and be like, "Well, goddamn, Baychella was crazy." You know, that's not an alternative fact. Blue, do you think that type of divine feminine energy uh, that Beyonce exudes, you know, uh, when brothers say they want a sister, they, they'd be like, yeah, I need a sister, you know, feminine and this and that. Beyonce was on stage like, suck my balls several times. Kept saying, suck my she, balls. I, I, balls. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Let's get into that. She Let's says things that. like, um, um, um. Damn, there was something else she said. Oh, oh, the, the newest one with Top Off. I'm the only lady still the illest nigga in the room. It's a hell of a line. The only lady but still the illest nigga in the room. That may be a turn off for some men. You know, you grew up in a nation of Islam. You know, women don't traditionally say things like suck my balls and I'm the illest nigga in the room or whatever. That's feminism. Okay. So is that intimidating to, do you think that's intimidating to brothers? For Absolutely. Okay. That's going to be intimidating to brothers. That's going to be um, speaking points. She had to give, you know, the critics speaking points to hard points. So they're going to stretch that. You know, I, interestingly, I, I, I was listening to that part. I didn't physically see it. But when I heard it, it reminded me of, what was the dude name on CB4? Was it Magic? What? I forget. I know you're talking about though. <laughs> you know they had a they had a they had a they had a, a scene in CB4, where they told them if they performed that song, they were gonna get shut down. And they went on stage and they performed the song and they had the the balloon balls and all of that and craziness. And they said, I was like, damn. It just reminded me of how parody has become our lives. And I was like, this girl sitting up here. What time is it? I saw the replay because I knew that children were gonna see this. I knew that young women. We're also going to be watching his performance. And then, um, you know, I mean, you know, let's, there was aspects of the show that I physically did see where, yeah, she got into her sexuality bag pretty, you know, she dug deep in that pocketbook. You know what I'm saying? But the cat's out the bag at this particular point. You know, again, we might be caught off guard, but I think that if you're a fan of Beyonce or you're somebody who's seen Beyonce shows, if you went to these shows, if you know her career, you know, these are some of the things that you can expect from her. You know what I mean? She's going to balance it. Um, there is a thing out here that I hear called, you know what I'm saying, especially amongst consciousness. They got sacred whores, uh, you know, righteous ratchetness and all of that. So, once again, people are going to be judgmental, but we have to take a closer look at our own community, our own society. You know what I'm saying? And these are conversations that you still, nothing curtails conversations that you have to have with your children. Is if you needed another reason 
These people will give you more and more reasons for you to have conversations and reinforce the importance that your daughters know, you know what I'm saying, why people might do certain things that they do or what what this is versus what that is. That's the world that we live in. Like, you have to be always on top of things. You know what I'm saying? Like, even, again, like I said, the 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 beauty of the moment of what we do and what we talk about and how it comes out. Like, even when we was doing that video outside, because I, 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 you know, I, I read the comments on that video about the young child that ran up on the microphone. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 little badass dude. <laughs> and, again, it, it missed me that we were sitting, we were talking about social media. And I was reading the comments and people were like, well, what would make him say that? Social media. Okay, social media. You know what I mean? These are the children that are on the back of the bus, more than likely, on their phone. Looking at World Star, looking at the clips, you know what I'm saying? Looking at all of the stuff that's spread on, on, on social media, all of the memes, all of the comedy skits. You feel me? And this is how they're being culturized and indoctrinated. And this is what comes out as a result. You know, when I get my opportunity and chance to be on camera, this is what I'm going to say. This is my cultural expression, you know. So we are we're we're immersed in it. You know what I'm saying? And we have to find another way, um, you know, to make sense of it all without necessarily always being in our bag of judgment. But, yeah, that's 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 the feminist aspect of where she's going with this thing that might be very uncomfortable to some people. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, it comes with a different aesthetic attached to it. If you're not familiar with that aesthetic, you might want to familiarize yourself just a little bit more. You know what I mean? So, yeah. On that note, leave your contact info, my brother. At Blue Pillar 44, that's on IG, Blue Pillar 44 at gmail.com. All right, for the family, um, again, uh, Soul Gold Biz, S O L E G O L D B I Z dot com. You can call me at respectable office hours, and that, that has been totally disrespected and, and not honored at all. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still going to have faith in the people because. I mean, what has come out of it is some beautiful conversations. Like I told you, the viewership of some of the most beautiful people on the planet, you know what I'm saying? And they're getting an opportunity to express certain things to me that otherwise I would not know, you know, about how these videos have affected them. You know what I'm saying? The things that they've gone through, you know, and also, you know, people are calling me, telling me what the product has done for them. So 347-504-1444, let's do like, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Respectfully, you know what I'm saying? I'm on the East Coast, so, you know what I mean? I'm still waiting don't, for my next bottle, man. Don't hit me at 5 in the morning and you're like, yo, but I'm on, <laughs> it's 9 where I'm at. Nah, son. You know, uh, apparelnormal.com, we're going to have some of the merch available of uh, some, you know, the coincides with the with the album, the double CD. Uh, we're going to be shipping those CDs out uh, next week, you know, early next week as well. You feel me? So it's project after project after project after project after project. You know, anybody in, we had a conversation about entrepreneurs. We're having a conversation about entertainers. Entertainers are entrepreneurs. You know what I'm saying? These entertainers are responsible, you know, to be going out on tour for however many days, however many towns, you know what I'm saying, performing and putting it all on stage and, and just leaving it there and going to the next town. Like, we really don't take stock, you know, because we just showing up for the performance, but we don't take any stock as to what goes into this, you know what I'm saying, the fact that these people have to train arduous hours, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, you're responsible for a 100-member entourage and cast this person is singing these people are dancing these people are playing the music the lighting has to be done right you know what i'm saying like all of this we're just again appreciating the performance without really respecting all of the tangibles that i had play 
consecutively to make this thing look like the theatrical thing that it is. We don't really take stock in that. The audio got to be right. The lighting has to be right. The dancers got to know their steps. The vocal backups got to be on point. You know what I'm saying? Everything has to be together. So, you know, I have a I have a profound respect for entertainers. I have a profound respect for the entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? Entertainment and entrepreneur, entrepreneurialism. This is something that everybody not might not want to get involved with. You know what I'm saying? This is not for everybody. You know what I'm saying? It, it really entails long, long nights, long hours. I got glasses on inside this building for a reason, family. You know what I'm saying? I only get two or three hours of sleep these days. So, you know what I'm saying? My shit is nonstop. Like, everybody's not built for this. This is not might might not be the life that you want if you can't really deal with the pressures of it. So, you know... And entertainment, you know what I'm saying? Like an artist like Cambada, who I see dedicating like 18 or 19 hours of their goddamn day to their craft. You know what I'm saying? Like these are different type of people. You feel me? Like everybody's not retrofitted like that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's damn sure not retrofitted like a Beyonce. You know, she prepared. She was made for this her entire life. Was preparation up into that night on that stage. So to understand that, like I said, I extract myself from the backstory of the this image and all of that. Like I'm not even looking at that. I'm looking at the little girl who was performing in the mirror from the ages of six, seven, and eight, and all of that. Right? And I'm remembering. The midpoint of like when I seen her in concert in 2001, damn near getting booed on the New York stage, right? She was with the Wyclef doing the um, whatever song she had Wyclef. They was just bringing her out, she, you know. Beyonce, the the Destiny Child, they they had a they had a hard time in New York. New York audiences was not feeling them girls, you know what I'm saying? And I was seeing a discomfort in her as a performer, you know. To see her now graduating to this particular place, the epitome yeah. of it, carrying a torch in the midst of all of this other stuff that's going on, these attacks on blackness, you know what I'm saying? For somebody to still post Wakanda at that, to remind you, you know what I mean? The people that's on that wave, what the wave is about, and it's supported by the people who you look up to. Like, okay, this is the wave now. This is what we on. It's a beautiful thing. I like that other than the other stuff. You dig? Yo, quick side note before I wrap it up. Remember um, her and Jay, Jay used to go at her in, 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 in certain songs way back in the day before we knew they was together? She had some song and she and she was like, question? Because remember she used to come at dudes yeah, yeah, and Jay yeah, was yeah. like, I'm trying to give you 60 seconds of affection. Yeah. Get your independent ass out of yeah, here, yeah. question? Yeah, he dissed her. I'm yeah. not, man, it's not Ronnie Romance, right, not yeah. buying up, no ma. No ma. <laughs> yeah. yeah, now they're together, man. Yeah, it's, now they're together. Oh, man, that was funny, man. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah it's funny, just looking back. And Nonetheless, now, now, um, yeah. can we celebrate melanated love without getting into all the other stuff? Can we celebrate black excellence on par with the best of the best? Without getting into all the other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Can you separate a moment from a movement? That's the question that I pose to you, family. Black love. All right. Um, we didn't speak at length about the coat of arms. I'm, I'm getting that uh, tomorrow. So we don't. That, okay. we don't that's a different. I'm going to touch on that. It's yeah. a different segment. Yeah. Nonetheless. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, whenever I get around to this law 44, you know I'm going to go berserk because this is it's, it's a beautiful thing. All right. You know, you know, and on that note, family, we signing out. We gonna see you next time. Peace. Peace. For the family out there, for independent media to stay independent, we need the help and support of the individual. All right. Patreon.com/backslash 
Black Magic 363. Peace. Peace, family. This is Brother Rich. Thanks for tuning in. Before we get into this Brother Panic video, uh, I want to give you guys a special announcement. Somebody called me earlier today and actually wanted to know if it was really true or if it was, or if it was like, you know, fake news <laughs> that Brother Panic, I said the Duke of Tears and Dr. Valentine is going to be in New York on June 3rd. It is true. Um, these bro I will interview each of these brothers individually this week or next week. June 3rd, they're going to be in New York City, man. I don't think I've ever seen a lecture of this magnitude. I've seen Bobby and Phil. That's probably the closest. Uh, I've never seen Panic, uh, Phil, and two other dudes that was, you know, on, on top of their game. So, I, you know, I didn't get a chance to make the Gathering of the Masters way back in the day. Um, you know, I, I was too young during those days, so I didn't get a chance to make them when Khalid and everybody was there. But this is the biggest lecture, man, that I've that that has been around in a long time. Um, it's going to be historical. June third in Brooklyn. For advanced tickets, go to www.blackmagic.eventbrite.com. Um, for the live stream, you can go to uh, www.usalivestream.com slash metaphysical masters and the links will be in the description bar but you know panic got a little preview for y'all he's going to be dealing with some deep stuff man some deep deep stuff man and he got a little preview for y'all with this video but it's going to be historical man make sure you don't miss it if this if you're in the metaphysical community the spiritual community this is something you've been waiting for for the last 10 years for us to come out with. It took a lot to bring this together. So I need you to show support and show out, show up. Uh, let, 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 let us know that this is what y'all want. Let us know that, you know, y'all want this type of information because this is the type of information that is paradigm shifting that will definitely change uh, your frequency if you come through that day, if you view it or whatever. But, um, yeah, I appreciate these brothers for uh, coming to New York June 3rd. Make sure you all show support, show up to the live or virtual. And um, if you got any questions, you could uh, contact the information on the flyer, event info, event and info. But uh, here go the Brother Panic Lecture. This is a preview of what he, the brother's going to be touching on. And um, I'll see the family June 3rd. Peace. You ain't never seen a man turn leg go with his hands. You ain't never seen a man get a queen wet with a glance. What a turn, wine, whole wide world, mine in my mind. In and out of time, my light shine bright for the blind. Some by the way I do it. 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 So I'm gonna be a millionaire soon, but I already knew it. I'ma die the bullets fluid. All this winning therapeutic. Some by the way I do it. Some by the way I do it. They be trying to drain my energy up with the battery is not included. Women trying to be recruited. Let them do the then I bought it. What is cute that she fool it? Some by the way I do it. I remember playing ring around the rosy now. I got a pocket full of OZs, water dollars, wallet full of old cheese. Got a Glock, a cock and pop a police. Block a block a block a boom, shock a lock a bottle, shot him while he rock a rosary. Got your mama watching out the nose, please. Sloppy toppy while I'm trying to go sleep. Somebody